B L O C H, uh, B L O C K, because B L O C H up there where Danny uh, Williams has that building now, uh, the first thing that ever was was the Block and Bates Hardware Store, and then it was later a General Store. And the Blocks, B L O C H, some of them are buried in the Pocahontas Cemetery. Uh, they were they were Jews uh, from uh, Germany, and then they were from England. And uh, the Bates, uh, 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 B E A C H E S, Bates. They were Jews too. They were German Jews, and they ran that hardware store up there. Uh, and then after they they sold it out to Ellis, and Ellis ran a grocery store and general store in all that part that Danny Williams owns now. They went out of business in 1955, and the Pocahontas Fuel Company moved their grocery store out of where the company store was, up to there, but they kept their dry goods and appliances down in the company store. And I guess it was uh, about 1971 or so, they gave up uh, the grocery store in there and moved it back down to the uh, uh, to the wooden building. It's now torn down, uh, and uh, that now belongs uh, to to Danny Williams. But uh, originally it was Block Block and Beach, and, and again they were Jews. Uh, and at one time there were 180 Jews living in Pocahontas. Okay, the, the next building, the one that's torn out now. Uh, was owned by Alexander St. Clair. The St. Clairs were a, a landed family in Tazewell County that owned a large part of this land that's now Pocahontas. And it was bought off of them, a large parts of it were bought off of them uh, by the uh, Southwest Virginia Improvement Company. But the Southwest Virginia Improvement Company didn't buy from right here, this street, St. Clair Street, on up and it was called St. Clair Reservation. They had kept it, and then they sold it off when the boom was going on here, lot by lot, and made a lot of money. And, they, and, and for a time, the St. Clairs ran a store in there, but they later uh, sold the building off. It changed time, hands several times, and eventually the town of Pocahontas got control of that building and for a short time. It was their fire department headquarters and the building deteriorated and they had to tear the inside of it out. Now, I missed that one building in between the torn out part and the block and beige. Uh, the one that's painted at this point gray. That was originally the Pocahontas National Bank. Uh, and it was built some sometime, I don't know, before the uh, turn of the previous century. I don't know the exact date. But it went kaput, and by that mean it went bankrupt in 1928. And the reason it did, the president of the bank uh, took a lot of the money and left. And the, and the bank failed. And that was in 1928. And uh, the bank had to be sold. And when the first National Bank of Pocahontas was sold, it was sold to the original bank, the Bank of Pocahontas, where the town hall is now. And at that time, the Bank of Pocahontas, the chairman of the board and the president was Isaac T. Mann, and he lived in Bramble. And at the time, he was one of the richest men in the United States. In the 1920s, he had a worth of over $65 million. And $65 million then was like a billion dollars today. And he owned the Bank of Bramble, and he was also the first president of the Pocahontas Fuel Company. And uh, he was the head of the Bank of Pocahontas. And he made them put in the deed when the Bank of Pocahontas sold that building to two doctors that never, and I've got a copy of the deed up in the office building, uh, that never could that building have another bank in it. He didn't want no other bank in it. And he sold it to doctors Alexander and Stump. And uh, they bought it, Dr. Alexander and Dr. Stump did. And then later they sold it to Dr. Ballard and uh, 
Uh, he ran a practice in there until about 1966 when he died. And when he died in 1966, thereabouts, uh, his family sold it off and they sold it to Charles Gilmore, who uh, uh, about uh, 10 years ago gave the building to Historic Pocahontas. And I'd already explained about the, uh, uh, about the fire department building, it was the St. Clair building. And then we come to this building. This building was built in 1895. Uh, to have an uh, opera house, a theater type situation upstairs, and the courtroom down here. Let's deal with the courtroom first. Uh, they held two types of court in here. Uh, up until 1973, uh, uh, in Virginia, they had what was called a county court that dealt with misdemeanors and uh, 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 also domestic relations cases and juvenile cases uh, for uh, county residents uh, for matters that, uh, that were not, uh, where the charges were brought on warrants, uh, not by the town, but by the county. And they had court here, uh, sometimes once a week, later years, every two weeks. And I think it was in the late 1950s that they quit having court over here. And the last judge that had court over here was Judge Albert Peary, Albert G. Peary. And, uh, but they continued to have the town court, which was called the police court, municipal court. They had it until June of 1973. And the last police judge was Frankie Rodriguez. Yeah. Uh, they had to quit having it then because the law changed. Uh, that they could know that the county court was done away with. Uh, but they had to quit having cases over here in, in the uh, late 50s. They had to either go to Bluefield or, or, uh, or to Taft because the story is that Judge Peary's clerk, Miss Ollie Valeski, came over here one day and she was up there at one of the desks uh, uh, keeping the record and handling the warrants for Judge Perry and she got her coat dirty and it made Judge Perry mad and wouldn't have court up here. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's the story of the coat. <laughs> because they hadn't cleaned the courtroom up. But anyway, uh, but that's a story that circulated. And so they had court here uh, until 1973. This jail operated until 1975 when the Department of Corrections finally made the town close it down. And I was a juvenile probation officer from 1973 to 1980. And uh, uh, up until, I guess it was 19, uh, 19 I don't know, sometime in the 80s, uh, temporarily you could put a juvenile in jail under certain circumstances. And I put a boy in jail back here in 1974. He was from Bishop and he was drunk. And I was a probation officer and couldn't get a hold of his mama and I didn't have nothing else to do with him so I temporarily put him in the jail back there in 1974. <laughs> Never had no more trouble out of him. Uh, but uh, 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 so that pretty much takes care of this down here. Uh, and also there's a history in there. Some people died back in that jail back there. And the last one that died, there's always been stories that uh, that the uh, police just let him die. All right. Yeah, his name was uh, Vincent Schumann. And he, oh, was, he was the son of the uh, former chief of police, who had been the chief of police here from the 40s uh, through the 50s. And he was the black sheep of the family, and he was uh, known to be drunk and rowdy at times. And it was in 1966, I think it was, uh, they arrested him for uh, uh, drunk in public and disorderly and resisting arrest, and he died in the jail cell back there. He was the last one to ever die back there. Is that right? And I'll tell you this personal story. I come in here in 1964 in July to take a learner's permit to ask for my driver's license. And I already had a West Virginia driver's license, but I was going to have to get a Virginia driver's license. And uh, the DMV used to come over here and 
They made you drive around the block for your driver's license mm -hmm. and park out there. And I was taking the learner's test here, and the place was crowded, a lot of people here. And there was two DMV people here, and then I was giving people the eye test and all that stuff. But the two police officers, the chief, and, and one of his uh, officers, it was uh, the chief was uh, Roy Sykes and uh, James Harrell. Mm -hmm. And they had people in jail. And they had this woman in there. And I was in here for about 45 minutes and I was trying to take that test. And all 45 minutes I was in here, she was in there going, oh God, oh, <laughs> help me. And they just sitting there just laughing their head off. And you know, it's hard to concentrate, you know. Okay. But that's the way things were, you know. It was a different world back like, then. You know, nothing like that could go on today. You know. It wouldn't be allowed, you know. But uh, they thought it was real funny. But anyway, uh, uh, so that's the jail. Well, the opera house upstairs in the boom days from, I guess, uh, 19 or 1895 when they first opened this up until about 1929. Uh, they had a lot of uh, shows, uh, uh, live shop shows, and uh, they had uh, uh, revivals up there, and, uh, uh, and the high school graduations took place up there through 1929. My mama, whose maiden name was Brunniger, Frances Brunniger, she was in the class of 1929. There was only seven people in the class, and only five of them took part in the graduation, and she was one of the five, and that was the last graduation they had up there. Uh, but uh, in, in the days that they had the performances over here, they had some big time acts. Uh, the great actress of the late 19th and early 20th century, Sarah Bernhardt, was supposed to have played here. The comedy team of Weber and Fields, W.C. Fields, who uh, later was on radio and in movies, and uh, and he was he was known to drink some, but he he likes he liked to play up that he was drunk more than what he was, and uh, and he had a radio show in the 1930s and 40s with uh, Edgar Bergen, and Edgar Bergen had two. Uh, uh, two dummies. Uh, he was supposedly a ventriloquist. He wasn't a real good one, but he was a good comedian. And one was Charlie McCarthy, who dressed, had him dressed up in a top hat and a pair of tails and a coat. And the other one was Mortimer Snurd, who wasn't supposed to be too smart. Yep, 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 I came through that door yesterday. I got in here somewhere. I don't know how it is, but I got here. But, but anyway, uh, W.C. Fields, uh, uh, you know, he, you know, sometimes played like he was drunk more than what he was, and then one of his routines was that he didn't like children. So, said, well, how do you like children, Mr. Fields? Parable and well done, son. Parable and well done. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, he's, uh, he was supposed to, and, and also, being it wasn't down in there, but I, I couldn't find it, you know, when we went down there. There used to be a, a, a writing on the wall I don't know if somebody else put it down there, but it said W.C. Fields. Yeah. I can't find it down there. Well, they probably have to paint it up or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and also the great evangelist who made it up on Pilchester Mountain too, uh, Billy Sunday, mm -hmm. he had a revival up there in the 1920s. And also the uh, Hungarian Be uh, Budapest uh, opera, uh, came here in the early days and did a performance too. Uh, and uh, during the Depression in the early 30s, they closed the opera house down, tore the slanting floor out, and put in a sewing factory to try to give people work or they were out of work during the Depression. It didn't work out. Yeah. After a few years, they closed it down. And in the late 30s and early 40s, the Hungarian community in October always put on a Hungarian grape festival uh, that uh, symbolized the fall where they would take the grapes and crush them and make wine and stuff out of them. And they had a big party up there and a dance. Uh, and then they closed the place down. 
and it stayed closed down until this was restored starting in 72, and they opened it up back in 73. They had it well restored in 73. Uh, and it stayed pretty well uh, restored uh, until uh, uh, the, uh, I guess, uh, about 1988 or 89 when uh, the town mistakenly moved out of this building, cut the water off, cut the heat off, and moved down to the post office building, and this building started deteriorating. And, uh, and it sort of fell apart. It's been fixed up some. This is, down here has been fixed up good. Uh, and, uh, but it, 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 that, that floor up there was one time a sliding floor. Uh, and, it, and it had theater type seats in it. So that's, that's pretty much the history of this building and the whole block. And if you go around the block here and you turn, that house there, uh, originally that house was owned by Jews. And, and a family by the name of Silberger lived there. And then a family named of Quas, K-U-A-S-S. -S. And the Quasses uh, were Jewish liquor dealers. And they ran saloon. One of the saloons down there at the Cricket was one of their saloons. And go up to the next building, it was the synagogue. It was the congregation, uh, Havas, uh, A A V O S Chevis, C H E S E D, and it and it ran until 1928, uh, and they closed it in 1928 because they no longer had what's called a menu, and what that means is that in Orthodox Judaism, to have a congregation, you have to have 12 households headed by a male. And all of a sudden, they didn't have 12 households uh, headed by a male family member, so they had to close the synagogue. And then little by little, all the Jews moved out. And I always tell the story, if the money left, the Jews left when the money left. And, uh, uh, but until 1928, that was, it's a harvest church that's got a name on it now, but it, it was the Jewish synagogue until, uh, until, uh, uh, until 1928. When you go around the corner, the American Legion building, if you will notice that, you know, it says American Legion post number 14. Uh, the one up in Bluefield, West Virginia is number nine, Riley Bowes post number nine. But those two, those low numbers, uh, they were some of the first American Legion posters created. The American Legion was formed by the Doughboys, the, the American Expeditionary Force, the soldiers in France. The war had ended, and they were going to be coming back to the United States. They fought in World War I, and they decided that they were going to form a an association of, uh, of World War I, of course it was called the Great War then, there wasn't a World War II. Uh, they were going to form an association of veterans. And some of the original founders of the American Legion, including Mr. Frank Elliott, who and he and his family ran that store, uh, they formed the American Legion. And so that number 14 post is one of the first uh, American Legion posts in the United States. So there's a lot of history in Pocahontas that has a lot to do, just not Pocahontas, but the whole country. And so that's it. That's the story. Tom, you should tell a little bit about the history, because I thought we weren't having to know all this stuff. <laughs> what's, what's your background, how do you know all this history? Well, two reasons. Number one, I am a, I am, uh, uh, I have the qualifications of being a professional historian. I've got a master's degree in history. I've taken historical, uh, I mean, historical research, historiography, and all those things. But my uh, great-grandparents, one side of my mother's family, not my father's family, but my mother's family, came to Pocahontas in September 1881 when they started cleaning off Pocahontas to build the original uh, settlement. They were Maxes. And uh, my, my uh, that, that would have been my mother's mother's family, the Maxes. My mother's father's family, the Grinegers, they didn't come here until 1900. 
They came from trees in uh, uh, Grayson County, from a mill. And the reason they came is the head carpenter of the, the coal company, then the Southwest Virginia Improvement Company, needed carpenters. And my great-grandfather, Brenninger, my grandfather and his two brothers, my great-uncles, were all carpenters. He hired the whole family and brought them here in 1900. And where uh, Butch Williams lives in that house, this uh, left side of the house, they moved in that house in 1900. Yeah, in the left side of you. Left side facing that way. Uh, and uh, so, uh, uh, and uh, my great grandfather, Maxie, uh, was supposed to work in the mines the night they had the big explosion in 1884, but he was sick, he didn't go. The work that night, and they had the explosion that killed 114. And uh, he told all these things to my grandmother, and my grandmother told them to my, my mother, and uh, I've, I've picked up on from that, but also I've got other written records and stuff, and a lot of things that Edna Drosic collected and used, and uh, that's what I know. All right. When was Pocahontas first, yeah. what was the very first year it was established? What? What was the first year Pocahontas was established? It was, uh, uh, well, they come here and started clearing the place off for, for the settlement in the mines in, uh, in uh, 1881. It was chartered and incorporated as a town by the Virginia General Assembly in uh, 1882, okay. March 1882. And the first mines was opened before? Uh, it was opened in 1882. Okay. How many saloons were they in this town? There may have been as many as 27. 27 saloons. What Old about churches? Saloons. Well, let's count them here. Uh, the uh, First Baptist Church, the Black Church, which is out there where the railroad right. track is, uh, that's one. Pocahontas Baptist Church, the White Church, Baptist Church, that's two. The uh, Presbyterian Church, which is on the one way street, three. Back up in Maple Grove, that brick church was the uh, Hungarian Presbyterian Church, four. The Catholic Church up on the hill, St. Elizabeth Catholic Church, five. The uh, Episcopal Church down on Water Street next to the log, log cabin, six. The Methodist Church next to the post office, eight. Uh, the Jewish Synagogue, nine, uh, and uh, the Black Methodist Church at Rock Church, 10, and at one time there was a, a Christian church too, Cycles of Christ, 11, I don't know exactly where it is. They started building a church on the corner here, but they never finished it. And there was another Black church back up on Church Street called St. Mariah's, that's 12. That's 12 churches that I know about. They had, they had all of the denominations here except Lutheran, as far as I know. I remember when this was, on the corner used to be a grocery store, was it not? A what? A little grocery store. Right, on the end. On the end? Uh-huh.